Productions. This episode is about something really important. And it's something that customers are asking me about. That's really what No Stupid Questions is about. I field questions and we start to move them into a demo. And one of the biggest, maybe a controversial subject to some people is moving your business to Windows. And these are Mac customers that are making decisions based on the current hardware availability. And the most important part of that is moving your business because it's about business. And in business, you deliver a product. And when you deliver that product, your customer really doesn't care how you created it. They don't care if it's early, they only care if it's late. And you wanna make sure you get it there on time. So the reason that I'm getting requests is because the hardware is moving ahead in the Windows world. Um, I really am a big fan of HP and their amazing Z series, especially the Z800 and now replaced by the new Z820. We're talking 16 cores, 32 threads. It's a render farm in a box, up to 512 gigabytes of RAM on this machine. It's absolutely amazing. We're gonna have a look at it at the, the end of this segment where we're gonna see the hardware. But the first thing we're gonna tackle is moving our projects from Final Cut Pro 7 over here on my MacBook Pro over here to Windows 7 64-bit. And I've been working with Windows 7 64-bit for quite a while. And you know what the only difference is? When I'm in my applications like Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, the only difference for me is the command key versus the control key. Everything else is just working exactly the same. So let's start by showing you how easy it is to move our Windows or our, our Mac projects over to Windows from Final Cut Pro 7. Over here on my MacBook Pro, this is my uh, project that I'm going to move. All I have to do is go to the file menu and export this out as XML. And you can choose the latest version of XML, which is version five here, click OK, and output the file. Was that painful? Not at all. Premiere Pro CS6 loves these XML files. They're very well written from Final Cut and will import and relink to the media in a second when we get over here. I've got my media sitting here on my removable drive and normally you don't connect high-end video files with USB 2, but you sure do connect them with USB 3. And this is an off-the-shelf, inexpensive drive with a simple, cheap little cable. We're talking $20 for this case. And I'm gonna take my files, plug them into the USB 3 uh, output port, which is now standard on the Z820, and we'll move the files over here. So let's get working over here. All right. Now you'll notice that my drive isn't here anymore. I moved it over here and this is a drive that's formatted as XFAT or EXFAT. That's a completely compatible format between Mac and Windows, native, no translation at all. And it also handles giant files. This is not the two gigabyte file limit. It's fairly new and it's, a, it's uh, supported on newer operating systems like Snow Leopard, Lion, and uh, Windows uh, 7, and uh, even Vista. So you can format every, everything, including right from um, the disk utilities on the Mac, XFAT. So now that I've uh, moved that from the Mac, I'm going to turn off my MacBook Pro, and we're going to open up our project over here. You can see this is the exact same file open. This is the Final Cut Pro XML file. I just opened this up. It's ready to play back. I linked all of my media inside there, and everything is ready to go. That is probably the most important part of this whole moving your business thing, because this is your currency. You want to make sure that what you had here is exactly the same here on Windows. So QuickTime, you can play that back for free on uh, Windows. DNX HD, you can encode and decode for free. And currently, if you need to encode to QuickTime ProRes on Windows, Telestream does offer a solution. That is the only solution for now. Stay tuned. All right. So let's talk about output. I mean, we've got lots of demos on Adobe TV talking about what we can do with amazing things inside Premiere Pro CS6, but I wanna reinforce that we're moving here because we want this rendering power. So here's my sequence. I wanna output this. So I'll jump out to export, out to media. Of course, uh, we can go out to EDLs, OMF, AAF, back out to Final Cut Pro XML, but I'm gonna jump out to uh, media 
and I'm going to choose my output formats here. Of course, we ship with a number of different formats. I'm just going to grab something really quick here and get into the queue because I just want to load up the queue at this point and uh, start up Media Encoder and we'll get going inside here. So there's our sequence set to uh, export out to a certain uh, drive. I can change the location of that drive very easily so I can go out to my uh, RAID drive here and we can create a new folder. And again, this is a, a great feature inside Windows. In this dialog box, I have a new folder button directly inside here. I'll create that and I'll call this output and open that up and click Save. Also, on the left-hand side, notice that we have Favorites and Libraries in here. Um, from Windows Explorer, so the desktop or the Finder that you're used to, you can put anything into the Favorites or the Libraries so that they show up inside dialog boxes. This is a really powerful native thing inside the operating system. So I'll click Save and take you over here on the right hand side and just remind you that we've got a bunch of user presets in here and I'm going to create a group of these presets. So create a new preset group up here and I'll call this customer one and I'll start grabbing some presets down in here. For instance, let's grab something from YouTube, uh, just you know any one of these formats here and I'll drag that up and let's grab something from uh, broadcast our brand new MXF uh, OP1A format and again I'll just drag something quick drop it inside there uh, maybe a device setting so I want to output um, at the same time to an Apple device so maybe this one which is iPad and iPhone and let's grab one more device from Android and we'll drag that up inside here so now we've got um, all of these formats, uh, whoop, let me just put them back into the customer. We've got all these formats into customer. I drag customer on top of this list over here, drag that on here. And now, again, we're going to take advantage of the power of this Z820. When I click play, you can see we've got multiple encodings at the same time. So if I had chosen, you know, 15 or 20 or 100 of these, it would start outputting all of these at the same time using all of the um, 16 cores, 32 threads inside here, and we get blazing fast output. So you're working with giant 5K files or even just minimal little HD files in here. The amount of performance that you'll get when you move from your current Mac solution into Windows, this is why you're moving. It's, this stuff is just blazing fast. So that's going to output uh, for us on the other side. I'm going to show you one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts, and you'll notice that you know, you can use any peripheral here. I'm, I happen to be using, um, I like these really trim little uh, Mac keyboards. So if you're not used to this, or you're coming from the Mac side, can, can I use my regular peripherals? Absolutely, everything can work just perfectly. This is really just simply a USB keyboard. So if I think of the command key as my Windows key, uh, then I can get a lot of functionality. For instance, Windows E is Explorer. So no matter where you are buried inside an application, you can jump in and grab a window and another window and take two windows and start navigating inside here and moving stuff around. Also, here's a great keyboard shortcut that I love. Watch this one. I'm going to take this file that I have here and I'm right clicking and dragging and I have a choice of copying or moving. Moving is not an option we have when we're working on our Mac. We have to, to move is two operations, copy, delete. And Windows 7 has this directly inside. And a lot of times I need to move something and free up material. Uh, one operation, very simple between there. Um, while that's outputting in the background, oh, and that's still outputting. I'm going to just go through uh, a few more things. Here's the Alt Tab key. So this might be something that you're familiar with. Oh, yeah, while we're talking about performance, I think I'll bring up the Task Manager, kind of like the Activity Monitor. And you can see on the uh, Z820, we've got 32 threads cooking away here, outputting this for us. So pretty darn fast uh, here on this uh, Z820. A few more things uh, that I'd like to show you is, let's just jump out while that's uh, playing there onto the desktop. Something simple like fonts. Well, if we click on a font, we've got a preview inside here. We can see it. How do you load your fonts? I'll select these 
and as soon as I select them and right click them, we get a new uh, uh, contextual menu that comes up. Windows 7 smart enough to know, hey, you selected something that needs system uh, activity. I click install, it installs those fonts for me, and guess what? They're done and they're now available to any running application. So I don't even have to open up font book, select them, and then click install. I did that right from the desktop. So let me keep going down on my list here and uh, talk about these things. So we talked about peripherals, uh, network access, you know, all the t same network access that you're used to, and you might not know that Bonjour for Windows is available. So if you're used to connecting to a smaller network and you like that that intelligence that Bonjour gives you, you can in install that uh, on Windows. Of course, Office is available on Windows, so we can get that. Multiple displays. Remember I told you about the uh, Windows key? Um, so I'm hitting that same Windows key and P, and look at that. Here's where we can go out to a second monitor and extend it, or if I'm in the case that I'm doing right now, and I don't want to change this because I am outputting to a second monitor in here, um, I could be going out very quickly to an extended display if I'm demonstrating to uh, on, a, on a projector or a second display. So much, much easier than the old XP days. Ooh, that stuff was scary, not scary anymore. Audio in, video out. All the same peripherals that you're using on the Mac, they work here from all the same companies. Oh, and we just output those final files. Thank you very much. So all the same things from all the vendors that you would expect for running audio and video hardware, all the peripherals from your favorite companies, they just work right out of the box. Um, here's another one that I like to show is uh, how do I zip a file? Well, if I send to, I just did a right click and say, send this to a compressed zipped folder. Guess what? We just zipped that file. Really easy. Double clicking on it and we'll uh, unzip. Uh, here's another one that uh, I use a lot. If you're into demonstrating, how do you zoom in? Well, if you hold the Windows key and hit plus, look, we zoom in. Now, this thing is a little bit of a, a pain because here it is floating. Just click on this little minimize button. It's gone. It's now going to be gone the next time you use this. So now when I'm hitting Windows plus, Windows minus, the zoom comes in. I use this all the time because I demonstrate stuff on the road in front of customers. And it works exactly the same as I'm used to over here on my MacBook Pro. All right, next up, saving screenshots. I have to communicate all the time through email and explain things to people. And the greatest way to explain it is to take screenshots of things. How do we do that on Windows? Click over here, the snipping tool. They don't always have the greatest names for things, but it's still a smart tool. Um, here's another tip. If you're gonna use that tool a lot, if you right click, you can pin this to the taskbar or the start menu. So if I choose the start menu, it moves it up to the top. And if I choose to pin this to the taskbar, it shows up down in here, kind of like your dock, the taskbar, very much like your dock. So I'll click on the snipping tool and I can do several things. I can have a rectangular snip, snip the whole window. So Mac users are used to this where I'll click and I'll snip that whole window. Uh, I don't wanna save that right now. Or we can um, use this to snip a rectangular part. So a rectangular snip. So I just wanna get a piece of that. And every time you do this, I love this. Instead of saving a screenshot to somewhere on the desktop and filling my desktop up, it actually brings up this little editor. And what this editor allows me to do is to highlight things. So I could use this and paint on here and highlight this. You're probably saying, hey, you know what? I gotta use Preview or Photoshop to do this and open it up. It's all inside one. And if we want, we could email it in the same application, built right into the operating system. And then there's another one in here I wanna show you. Let me just say, don't show that again. This one is pretty crazy. This one actually says, freeform snip. Say what? Yeah, so we can make a crazy shape anywhere and it's going to uh, call that up. So sometimes you don't wanna edit the edge of something out. I think you get the idea. So making screenshots, snipping them, sending them an email or saving locally and adding annotations is built right in. All right, what about video player? QuickTime player one runs as well as the Windows Media Player. Uh, you just need to install QuickTime. It's a free install. 
every single thing that you're demonstrating and running on your Mac in the QuickTime Player is going to run here on Windows. No problem. Shortcuts versus aliases. Um, if you have something and you create a shortcut, so if I drag it here, create a shortcut, this is exactly like dragging an alias on the Mac. In fact, Apple borrowed this little arrow thing from Windows many, many moons ago. It just tells us it's not the real thing. It's pointing to a different location. Um, and here's something that I'm, I'm going to tell you that I turn off all the time, but it's up to you. It's user access control. Down in here, if you just type in UAC and it shows up, change user access control settings. When you click on this, drag this slider all the way down to the bottom. Now, if you want to be notified of some changes, keep it where it is. This is one of those things that all of us at Adobe, when we get a new Windows machine, we call this up, we drag this thing all the way down, and Windows is going to warn us as saying, you know what, this is going to protect you if you leave the slider up. Protect Schmeck. I don't care. I know what I'm doing on here. I'm not going to be doing anything that's going to harming my machine, but it's up to you. I'm not telling you you should do this. This is up to you. I do it and get it out of there. Notice again, the OK has got this little shield on it. That's Windows way of telling you, hey, what you're doing is affecting the system. No problem. I know what I'm doing. User access control. Get out of my face. I don't need you. Uh, application tab switching, so uh, Alt, Tab, Tab, Tab between there. If you do Windows Tab, 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 then you can see we've got this other kind of cool display in here. And, uh, you know, it's up to you whether you want to use that or not. Um, I don't really get that much value at it. I just use the Alt switch uh, tab to get out of there. Browsers, you know, uh, Internet Explorer, not a big fan, so I'm not going to use it, but I install Chrome in here right away, and uh, it works just perfectly. Um, the Creative Cloud, Adobe Creative Cloud, works exactly the same on both Mac and Windows. So I can run it on here, can run it on my MacBook Pro, and actually share stuff between that in the cloud. Very easy. Got lots of demonstrations here on Adobe TV to show us that. Viruses. Oh, viruses. So. As a longtime Mac user, before I got on Windows, there was a lot of um, things said about viruses on Windows. And you know what? I have never, ever had a virus on my Mac. I've never experienced a virus on Windows. So I'm really um, not worried too much about that. Um, of course, you know, back your stuff up and all of that. But seriously, um, I haven't had any of those problems. So let's keep going. All right. Uh, Hardware, GPU, uh, we've got an NVIDIA uh, Quadro Graphics uh, here. It's uh, the 4000. We've got more options on the Windows side, and NVIDIA is the one that's controlling the drivers. And this is a huge advantage because we don't have to wait for Apple to update the drivers. Um, NVIDIA will always be increasing the performance and tweaking the drivers. Um, you know, currently, if you're on a, on a Mac Pro, you have one choice, and that's the Quadro 4000. But on Windows, I can go from the 4000 to 2000 uh, and the 5000, all the way up to 6000. And there is a huge amount of difference in power that we take advantage of in uh, Premiere Pro, in After Effects, in Media Encoder, in using those faster performance systems. Um, we just want to make sure that we've got... Um, we're taking advantage of all the power. If you've got multiple cores, they're working really hard, and we're going to use all of the 64-bit capability inside here. So that's pretty much getting used to and getting customized uh, or familiarized with what you're doing inside here on Windows. Um, if you want to really make yourself feel at home, there are actual styles that you can load in skins that you can load inside here and looks that will, th there's a lion thing that you can load inside Windows 7 and it looks exactly like, uh, like lion Mac OS 10, but um, that's up to you whether you want to do that. The most important thing is what I started with. You saw how I went right from Final Cut Pro 7, got my XML out, brought it right into Premiere Pro CS6. The stuff opened, it works, it's playing back. It's much, much easier than, you're, than you think. And from here, we're gonna move on to the hardware and look at the real hardware working in front of us. So let's get started with that into the hardware. I've asked Terry Brown from HP to come and join me to show off this great hardware. Welcome, Terry. Thank you, Colin. 
So we're going to start over here with the brand new HP Z820. Now, this is a special one, which I'll let you talk about in a second, but just to cover off the things that are really important to the video folks, we've got all the same I.O. cards from AJA, Blackmagic, Matrox, Bluefish even has some, some cool stuff for Windows. All of that supported uh, right out of the box on the Z820. Uh, so we've got PCI, Three, you said? PCI Generation 3, correct. Yeah, so super fast bus cards in the back. Uh, and one of my favorites is USB 3. And if you're not used to USB 3 speed, it's crazy fast. You even marked the 2 and the 3. The 3 are blue, so they're really right. easy uh, to connect to. And it's just an, an all-in-one amazing uh, workhorse of a machine, especially if we start adding cards like the NVIDIA Quadro 6000, requires a lot of power, and we stick a Tesla card in there too, um, the power supply in here, if I'm not mistaken, is over 1100 watts That's inside correct. here. That is All correct. right, so right out of the box, a speed demon of a computer. It's gonna render video, I, li I like to call this, this is a render farm in a box. But I want you to tell me a little bit about the special Red Edition that we have right here. Well, so the Red Edition is a, is a result of a collaboration with Red, Adobe, and HP mm -hmm. uh, to answer all the questions from people who are looking for their next platform. With Adobe CS6 coming out and all this incredible acceleration available, if you have the hardware, the question is, what is the hardware I should be using? And this is really the result of that. So the Red Edition uh, comes from two of our OEM partners, TechServe and Promax. It's the only okay. place you can get them. And we've got quite a bit of customization. You can see right on the front, we've got red mag readers. These are the world's only internal red mag readers. There's a combination Blu-ray player, red mag reader, and then a standalone red mag reader. Uh, the system comes integrated with the uh, red rocket cards. Wow. We've got a Quadro 4000 card. We can add a Tesla card for more GPU from NVIDIA with the incredible CUDA acceleration. Mm -hmm. We also have 32 gigabytes of RAM expandable to 512 gigabytes, a half a terabyte of RAM, if that's enough. Hopefully that, enough for most people. That's crazy. It's crazy. Because a lot yeah. of people don't even know that that's an option in the world. They think 32, right. uh, that's top Maybe 64 down. if you cheat, but you yeah. know, yeah. You can go half a terabyte, so it's, it's phenomenal. That's and then from crazy. a CPU standpoint, you've got dual eight core processors from Intel. So uh, 16 cores, 32 threads. Uh, when you add that to all the GPU cores you have, and then the red rocket card, you just have an incredible machine. Right, so when we're turning on the Mercury playback engine or using uh, acceleration in After Effects, those 32 cores, we're gonna use them. I mean, if you yeah. call up the display and you see all the cores just absolutely working full force. Yeah. So really important just to understand that the, the stock 820 is a uh, regular HP uh, purchase, but the special red edition are, are from uh, the two vendors. Correct, from Pro Max and TechServe, correct. And here's another thing, upgrading, getting inside the machine, moving stuff around. Uh, I'm just going to, you know, you should probably not do this while it's turned on. But <laughs> Probably not, but go, go ahead. Let's see what happens. But you can just literally take this off just that easy, and there is the inside, and everything is easy to service. It, it really is. This is a result of HP's workstation division in Fort Collins. All they do is workstations, and they've got great mechanical and thermal engineering there. And what they've designed in the ZA20 is the world's first toolless system. And every single component you might want to change, even the power supply comes out with no tools. You literally pull any place you see a green handle, and that means it's a user-changeable part. Wow. Pop it out, put it back in. No, uh, no text necessary. Right. So very, and, very impressive. And, and I'm used to that at home. I've, I've, you know, you fill up drives like nobody's business now because we're shooting on, you know, 4K, 5K media, and these drives you can easily just pull them out, grab off the shelf, regular stock media, drop it in, and uh, set up a raid, and you're off, ready to go. Exactly correct. Right. All right. Next up is what things look like. So, I think a lot of users are used to 8-bit displays. And then they're used to only a professional display coming out of an SDI, which is completely supported in the solution. But if you just want a display that looks the best, then Dream Color with 10-bit, that, that's pretty crazy. But that's that, been standard for you guys That for is crazy. And it is crazy that we've had this display out now for almost three years. <laughs> it's the Dream Color display. It's a 30-bit, 10-bit display, 30 mm -hmm. bits if you add the three together. Right. Um, it's got every interface known to man except for SDI, which you can get to from some of our partners like right. AJA. Uh, but you've got DisplayPort, you've got HDMI, you've got Component In, Old Composite, uh, VGA, <laughs> dis, um, et cetera. So any connection you might want is there. But most importantly, it has the adjustable color space. So it's a billion color display, it's an right. LED backlit panel, and the color fidelity is, is amazing. So it's a reference quality display. And what's most impressive is when you look on screen, you can choose your color space. So you can pick Adobe RGB, right. which might be interesting for you. Right. You can also pick Rec. 709, Rec. 601, DCI emulation for digital cinema. Uh, and you can also program your own color space. So if you're building for some particular device with a color space that's unique, you can wow. program your own. 
And you can also do the, re the refresh rate adjustment. So it will sync to 48 frames. So you can do it on a 48 hertz and sync perfectly with 24 frames per second film speed. Content, no jitter, no, no artifacts. Go to 30 frames. You can even do 25 frames per second. Euro TV at 50 hertz. So it's, wow. it's adjustable from a frame rate perspective and a color space perspective. Wow. Well, you know, I was at Shane Hurlbut, who's uh, you know an ASC cinematographer, and there was a boot camp he had last year, and on set, he actually has a dream color display with him. He actually sits in on his Fisher dolly, and, and this is what he's looking at to, to reference all of the stuff he's shooting all it's, the time. It's interesting you say that. It's become a very popular display for a, for a cart, and for yeah. bringing it out into the field, we've got people like the Bandito Brothers that have these out with a battery under their cart so they can take it out in the desert. That's awesome. It's an amazing display. People are calibrating their cameras to it. It's really pretty So impressive. speaking of portability, I, I want to <laughs> bring in one of my favorite uh, systems, and that is the Elite Book. This is not just a laptop. You didn't call this a laptop. This is a mobile, mobile workstation. workstation. That, it's crazy. And you don't use that term lightly. Workstation, you don't throw that around. This is a true mobile workstation. It's wicked fast. It's heavy, but it's heavy for a reason. All the components are workstation grade, and it just Correct. rips through rendering out in the middle of a field somewhere. Exactly. Excellent. Um, you know, the, the features are amazing. People say, well, you're still building an 8-pound, 17-inch notebook. Everything's getting smaller. Why would I use this? But when they realize what's in it, it's, it's an amazing device. Up to 32 gigs of RAM, 3.7 <laughs> gigahertz quad-core Intel Xeon processor, triple hard drives, and they're SATA, 6 gigabit SATA, and there's wow. one third one that's a SATA 2, which is the older speed. But you can do RAID 5 in it. Wow. With up to three one terabyte hard drives, you could have two two usable or three with RAID zero. Amazing three terabytes in, in a laptop. You've got a Quadro five thousand series card in it. Yeah, with so two gigabytes of RAM. So GPU and Mercury is amazing <laughs> on this thing. Uh, and then to top it all off, uh, you can even do uh, in field color grading. So you've got a dream color display option, just like we talked about here. We've Same got it option. on a notebook. That and again, that's amazing. Ten bit. My favorite on the side, USB 3. USB 3. You're moving stuff around wicked, wicked fast. So that's exactly. the uh, Elite Book, and I love having that around. And then we've got a special treat on the end here, something brand new from HP. Yes. This is an amazing, uh, amazing product, and it's a result of the same engineers that designed our Z series, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the toolless. Uh, user user installable, user maintainable, uh, beautiful aesthetic. So it's a really a, a beautiful piece of equipment. It's called the HP Z1, and it is the world's first uh, all-in-one workstation. And we emphasize the word workstation. It is a workstation components. So uh, from a performance perspective, 32 gigs of RAM, quad-core processor. We've got Quadro graphics, so you can have a Quadro 4000M graphics uh, card in it. That, that's crazy. And you know, we've been on tour with uh, the Z1 for a while, and people mistake this. They think this is the display. Right. Especially when you tell them <laughs> there's a, a, a Quadro 4000, they're, they're looking for the, the workstation underneath there. It's very common. They just think it's a display, and they go, why are you showing a display? Well, yeah. it's not just a display. It's an it's entire workstation thing. in this system. So um, quite a remarkable system in terms of performance. The display is a 2560 by 1440, so it's a 2K mm -hmm. plus display. Wow. It's a a 10-bit, uh, I think this is part of our theme today. Again, yeah. uh, Again, with that Quadro performance, you get uh, amazing color fidelity. It's tuned from the factory to Rec. 709, one of our first displays that tuned to start at Rec. 709 color space, very popular for HD. Yeah. Um, so it really is a, a phenomenal device, all in one. The beautiful thing, though, is when you actually open it up. So let me show you that if I could. Please. I think, I think it's, uh, this is my most, the most fun thing to do. So let's do a quick shut down here, and uh, we will... Um, We can start while it's going down. So it looks like a monitor, but it's not. You flip it back into its service mode, as we call it. And uh, here you can get a really good look at what this system actually is. So you have a beautiful 27-inch <laughs> display, but That's inside great. is a full workstation. And um, the great thing about it is very much like the Z-Series we looked at. All the green touch points mean those are user-changeable parts. All mm -hmm. you have to do is grab it where your instinct tells you. So for example, here is our Quadro 4000 graphics card. And that's how easy it is to change it. No tools. That's no amazing. manuals, um, very, very easy. And so any user can get in it and change it simply, and that snaps it right back in. How about your, dis how about your storage? You decide you've got a full hard drive, that's how you change the hard drive. <laughs> Piece of cake. Same with the fan. Uh, my favorite joke is everybody has a cat that sleeps too close to their computer. You <laughs> clean your fan out of the hair a little bit, you can snap that back in. Again, no tools, uh, completely user installable, changeable. You have 32 gigabytes of RAM. That's changeable, of course. You even have a Blu-ray burner. This is a slot load Blu-ray burner that's built into the system. Nice. And under here are your Xeon processors, and here's a 400 watt power supply, a complete workstation inside what looks to be just a monitor. Right, and the drives, you have a choice of that single drive, or you could stick two 
Correct. SSDs? Two laptop size drives. You That's get a couple of SSDs uh, awesome. or a combination. So very, very flexible. Uh, incredible performance in a very limited amount of space. And um, there's our nice hydraulic close uh, feature. And when you're ready to turn it back on, you simply load it back up. Hit your power button. And if I put everything back correctly with no tools, no manual, very little looking, um, it should come back up. Excellent. And so the theme here that I really love is this is a whole bunch of video choices, right? So if I'm a video guy and rendering means everything to me, you know, an 820 is really the speed deeming that's just going to, I'll stick all my red files, my huge After Effects comps, uh, and just render them away. I've got my mobile workstation if I'm out in the field. If I like more an all-in-one, the Z1 just really is a, a great rounded out choice of all of this. Exactly, stuff. exactly. Great space saver and, uh, and very high performance as well. So yeah, 30 bit and lots of horsepower really are the theme, I think, of the HP workstation products for, for video. And certainly for CS6, I think it's really the perfect match. It, it is. And the people that are currently using them that we talk to, because you're talking to them just as much as our, the Adobe customers, you know, we're talking to them all the time. And they rely on this. Like we go into mm -hmm. large corporations where it's wall to wall. At that time, Z800, now switching over to the 820. And, you know, in compositing in 3D, they're already into this world, That's all correct. over it. They've been the de facto standard in that industry for a, quite a long time, production studios yeah, using exactly. uh, animation, special effects, where there's thousands of these things in process. And, yeah. and again, those companies love these systems because of the reliability, the maintainability, yeah. the even the things like the handles, uh, you know, that are well yes. thought out uh, exactly. features for people that move and change quite a bit where you've got crews coming and going. So a lot of, lot of features in our systems from the colored, you know, this display, for example, was designed by some of those studios. They asked us to build this. Exactly. So, We've really put a lot into building uh, products for, you know, for the uh, media and entertainment industry, as we call it. Yeah, and, <laughs> and the, the way I like to say it, which is, is kind of odd, is, you know what, I kind of think of HP as the Apple of the Windows world, you know, that you guys have this level of quality and reliability that is just unmatched. And uh, I think that the Adobe CS6 customers that are looking for a replacement in power and speed and moving to the Windows world, you are going to absolutely love any of these solutions. So thanks a lot. I agree. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right.